Lucky. Welcome to the 506th Imagine Greater Buffalo program hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. We're glad you've joined us today uh, for the start of a new season of the Imagine Greater Buffalo program. We look forward to welcoming many dynamic local community speakers over the coming months here on Zoom. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature, along with ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Now, before we get started, just a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted and your video turned off. If you have a question or comment, please type it into the chat box and we'll go through uh, them at the end of the presentation. We are recording this program, so you can watch it again later on the Downtown Central Library's Facebook page and their YouTube channels, and we certainly hope you share the link with others. Now, on to our featured first speaker of the season. Brad Hahn currently serves as Executive Director of Explore Buffalo, a nonprofit organization that provides tours, and educational programs about Buffalo history, architecture, and neighborhoods. He helped found the organization in 2013. So this is their 10th anniversary. Brad is proud resident of Buffalo, having graduated from Williamsville South High School, as well as from the University at Buffalo as a presidential scholar in the Honors College with a triple major in political science, English, and geography. He also received the Samuel Capon Award given to the graduating senior, quote, who best exemplifies the spirit of free inquiry and expression, end quote. Well, let's welcome Brad Hahn. Thanks so much, Dennis. Thanks for that wonderful introduction and always a pleasure to uh, be part of the Imagine series. So I'm here uh, today to talk a little bit about our Doors Open Buffalo event that's coming up uh, on September 30th, uh, just a couple weeks away, um, but also to talk a little bit, like you said, about Explore Buffalo in our 10th anniversary year. Um, Explore Buffalo was founded by a group of volunteers with a passion for sharing the stories of Buffalo and its history, its architecture, and its neighborhoods. And over the past 10 years, uh, our organization has grown from about 6,000 people a year uh, taking a tour with us to, in 2019, over 25,000 people. And then with a little bump uh, in the road from the pandemic, uh, this year it looks like we'll be back on track to be at or above that 2019 level. So um, right now we're in the uh, midst of our summer tour season, we have over 80 different uh, tours and programs that we offer to the public uh, that help to explain the history of our community and uh, point out its incredible architecture. So we have walking tours of downtown Buffalo, um, neighborhood tours, uh, about 30 different neighborhoods across the city of Buffalo that we feature on our tours and the historic villages of Erie and Niagara County as well. We also have a couple of different bike, bus, and boat tours. Uh, September is the last month for our boat tours. Uh, we have the Disasters of the Buffalo Harbor Cruise coming up on September 9th with the Buffalo Harbor Museum. And then on September 16th is our popular Prohibition Cruise. Um, we also have our City of Light bus tour runs all year round. And that's based on the novel by Lauren Belfer set in Buffalo at the turn of the 20th century. We also have our tours available for groups. So if a group, uh, whether it's 10 people, 100 people, uh, we can arrange a group for uh, a private group um, and make that uh, experience possible for whatever the group may be, a group from out of town, a social group, uh, et cetera. And we also have starting up uh, primarily in the winter months when we're doing fewer tours, is our uh, education series, our speaker series. And we also make our uh, speaker series available to other organizations, uh, senior centers, libraries, things of that sort uh, through our guest speaker program. 
So right now in our summer tour season, uh, we're currently offering about 300 tours per month. Uh, so these are primarily walking tours like this downtown uh, walking tour you see outside of the old post office. Uh, and that'll continue into September. And then our walking tour season gradually kind of winds down as we head towards November. And we do offer tours uh, year round, uh, but on a much more limited basis in the winter months. All of our tours and programs are made possible by a group of terrific volunteers. We currently have over 250 volunteers uh, with Explore Buffalo, about 120, 130 or so of those are trained as docents and they complete our annual docent training class. Uh, that takes about 12 weeks over the winter months. <coughs> and if you're interested in becoming a docent with Explore Buffalo, uh, check out our website later this year and you'll find the information probably around November for next year's docent training class. This year, we've rolled out um, almost 10 different new tours, and so we've started a new partnership with Kleinhands Music Hall and are now offering regular tours there, as well as a new partnership with the Olmsted Parks Conservancy, providing uh, free walking tours of Olmsted Parks, including Delaware Park, Front Park, uh, and MLK Park. We also have a new series of Olmsted themed bike tours. We've also added two new cemetery tours to our lineup this year at Concordia on the east side and Holy Cross Cemetery uh, in Lackawanna, and a couple of new neighborhood walking tours on Northland Avenue uh, and on Oakland Place. And so as we make our way into September, uh, this is our biggest event of the year, Doors Open Buffalo, uh, inspired by Doors Open events in other cities like Baltimore and Pittsburgh and Milwaukee. Uh, but Explore Buffalo started offering Doors Open in 2019, uh, had a little interruption with the pandemic, uh, but are now uh, 21, 22, and 23. We're continuing back on track. Uh, last year, we had Doors Open in the Broadway Fillmore neighborhood, and this year, we're bringing doors open back downtown. And it's our vision that we'll likely keep this um, every other year sort of pattern where we do a neighborhood one year followed by downtown and then the different neighborhoods that we really uh, get to explore all of Buffalo uh, beyond just the downtown core. So this year is a downtown year and we are uh, excited to have 27 buildings open for doors open 2023. Uh, the event will be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is completely free, open to the public. Uh, all 27 of those buildings are within one mile of the convention center. And so we encourage people to park once and then walk. Uh, it's really a, a very walkable uh, event. Again, all the buildings are within about a mile of each other in the downtown core. You can visit any or all of the buildings at your own pace in any order. Um, you can just pick one building you want to go to. You can try to see all of them. 27 is a, a tough challenge if you want to try and get all of those in in six hours. Um, the average person over the past couple of years of doors open we've seen uh, goes to between five and eight buildings. Um, and so again, most people pick a couple of buildings they want to see. And uh, that's really the beauty of this event is it's up to you, it's up to the visitor to pick and choose what buildings you want to explore. Do want to thank our sponsors for Doors Open Buffalo as a free event. Um, free events do still cost money. Uh, we have a lot of uh, marketing that we do for this event. We have insurance to pay for this event um, and a lot of staff time as well that goes into planning this event. Um, so we're grateful to all of our sponsors, um, including um, the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History and Nature for their support of Doors Open Buffalo 2023. So some of the buildings that will be open on September 30th, I'll run through a couple um, of those. So City Hall will be open uh, on September 30th, our beautiful Art Deco masterpiece on Niagara Square. Uh, the Elkett Square building completed in 1896 um, by Daniel Burnham and Company, uh, architecture firm out of Chicago will be open and you can enjoy this incredible, beautiful uh, interior. And for kids, there'll be a fun uh, scavenger hunt inside of the Alcott Square building to try and find some of the patterns inside of that mosaic floor. St. Paul's Cathedral, uh, designed by Richard Upjohn, will be open uh, for doors open this year. Uh, as will m and Bank Plaza, a modern style masterpiece designed by Minoru Yamasaki. So we're excited to have 
uh, actually three different M&T locations open this year, including M&T Plaza, uh, M&T's branch at the Gold Dome Bank, um, and then a third I'll mention in just a moment. Um, the Electric Tower will also be open this year, and so you can go inside the lobby as well as up to the 10th floor um, of the Electric Tower and see the really incredible restoration of this building um, done by Iskola Development. The Hotel Lafayette, designed by one of Buffalo's uh, favorite architects and the first professional woman architect in the country, Louise Blanchard Bethune. Uh, this will be open as well on September 30th. Uh, we've also partnered with the Michigan Street African American Heritage Corridor, and so there'll be four sites in the corridor that will be participating. So the Michigan Street Baptist Church. Um, access to this will be limited because of construction uh, inside, but we will also have uh, as part of this event, people can go inside the new Michigan Street African American Heritage Corridor headquarters on Broadway, uh, as well as take a tour at the Nash House Museum. A uh, new addition that we're excited to include um, that includes some M&T tech space is the Lafayette Court Building. This is on Main Street uh, between uh, Lafayette Square and Mohawk. And this was a long time ago as the Hangar Department Store and now is this really incredible office space used by M&T. So we're excited to include Lafayette Court this year. So something new that we have done this year uh, is we have organized stores open into uh, different categories of buildings. And so this may help people uh, who want to attend pick and choose what buildings they're going to go to. Um, these are suggestions. You don't need to, uh, for example, do all seven buildings on the Family Friendly Trail. Um, you could do some of these, mix and match with some of the others. Uh, again, there's suggestions to help people identify uh, which group of buildings they may want to check out. So all the buildings on the Family Friendly Trail uh, are going to have some kid-friendly activities activities involved. Um, for example, I mentioned that scavenger hunt in the Elk Square building. Uh, they'll be printing at uh, Western New York Book Arts, um, at uh, WFO Radio. You'll be able to, kids will be able to go into uh, the radio booth, pretend they're uh, live on air, and lots of other fun activities at these different locations. We also have a cluster, uh, a trail of buildings focused on what's new. These are buildings that have been renovated recently or have something exciting uh, and new inside, something recent um, that has been done inside of these buildings. Our classic Buffalo uh, Trail, these are some of the best known buildings downtown, some of our favorite local landmarks. You see them there, City Hall, Electric Tower, um, Old County Hall, and the others. So uh, for anyone looking to really get that classic Buffalo uh, architectural experience, these are some of the buildings they may want to check out. And also our Houses of Worship trail featuring, of course, as it sounds, the uh, different Houses of Worship that are shown here. Something that often comes up, people want to know where should we uh, go to eat? Where should we um, grab a coffee or something like that while we're at Doors Open Buffalo? So here's a list of suggested uh, downtown cafes and restaurants. These have confirmed they'll be open uh, on Saturday, September 30th. Some of them are open um, just for this event. They're not normally open on a Saturday. And so we encourage everyone while you're downtown on September 30th for Doors Open Buffalo, uh, head to one of these different downtown cafes or restaurants um, and grab a coffee, grab lunch, et cetera, uh, and really enjoy your day downtown on September 30th. So to attend Doors Open Buffalo, um, we ask everyone to register for free at explorebuffalo.org. Uh, and again, this registration, uh, we ask everyone to do this. Um, it really helps to speed up entry to the buildings. Uh, and it also gives us the data uh, that we're looking for and that our funders are looking for uh, so that we can say where people came from. Right now, for example, about 10% of people who have registered so far uh, are from outside of the Buffalo Niagara area. So about 2% uh, are Canadian, 2% are from other states, mostly Pennsylvania, uh, and about 6% are from other uh, parts of New York State, Rochester, uh, et cetera. And so again, that data really helps us uh, with providing the information to our funders after the event uh, to justify their support for Doors Open Buffalo. 
So after you register for free, uh, you'll get a confirmation email. And then we encourage people to take some time, look at the participating locations to plan out your day. Um, and then on September 30th, you can start at any participating location. You do not need to start at the convention center. You can if you wish to, um, but you can go to any of the 27 different locations to get started. At your first building, you're going to get a wristband um, and that will provide entry to any other building open on Saturday, September 30th. Uh, we will have printed maps at any of those locations on September 30th. So again, any location you go to, you can pick up a map that you can use to guide yourself around the other locations. Uh, you can also use on our website in the next week or so, we'll have a Google map uh, up on our website. So you can use that to navigate around downtown on September 30th as well. So, um, on September 30th, if you have questions, if you want to um, learn more about Doors Open, if you um, just need some guidance, some direction, uh, come to the event hub, which is inside of the convention center. The convention center has its uh, new exterior is almost completed. So that'll be another thing uh, to check out on September 30th. It really has um, definitely freshened up the exterior of the convention center. Um, so again, those maps, you can pick them up at the convention center or you can go to any of the participating locations on Saturday, September 30th. So if you have questions um, the day of the event, come to the convention center. If you have questions before the event, uh, contact Explore Buffalo directly, either give us a call um, or email us or contact us via social media, uh, whatever way is most convenient for you. Uh, so there's our website, explorebuffalo.org. So that's where you can go to register for Doors Open Buffalo, uh, as well as all of the tours that we're running uh, this year as part of our 10th anniversary season. Uh, so again, thank you so much to Dennis for the invitation to be here today and hope to see everyone at Doors Open Buffalo on Saturday, September 30th. Great story, Brad. Great story. Uh, and, and thank you. Uh, how, ma how many years have you done the, the doors open? I, I may have missed that. Uh, this is the fourth year for doors open. So we did 2019, um, was a downtown year, and then we canceled 2020 because of the pandemic. Uh, 2021 was a downtown year. 22 was Broadway Fillmore. And then this year will be the fourth yeah. version of uh, doors so open. It's in its early stages. Folks, a uh, good chance to chat with uh, Brad. Uh, many of you are supporters of uh, ex of uh, Explore Buffalo and uh, uh, send in those questions. Uh, Brad, uh, having been with Chuck LaCuse at the early stages of what would evolve into ex Explore Buffalo uh, with the uh, combinations of Presco, uh, uh, Buffalo, uh, Niagara Preservation, uh, the old Landmark Society. Uh, Chicago was always our model. Buffalo's a small, small city compared to Chicago. Uh, we, we may be in the top 75 or, or thereabouts, if I had to guess, uh, as, as far as a 280,000 uh, city population compared to Chicago. So give the big cities their due, especially Chicago, but who else would you compare yourself to and say, wow, we, we, uh, we've gotten as large as fill in the blank. Is it Pittsburgh? Yeah. Is it, uh, are there cities that were there or, or we catapulted ourselves to the number two spot? <laughs> uh, yeah. So we actually, we have um, reached that, that number two spot. So um, uh -huh. today Buffalo uh, through Explore Buffalo has the greatest um, the largest nonprofit tour program of any city in the country outside Chicago. So um, that's in terms of the number of people taking tours as well as the variety of tours. So that 80 some tours that we offer um, is only exceeded by the Chicago Architecture Center. Um, there are actually very few cities that have a standalone tour focused organization. So um, Chicago's one, uh, Boston with Boston by Foot is another. Um, I have a group that I'm part of that is organizations with a, a tour program um, of which there's only eight or 10 organizations in the entire country that 
participate in this group. And most of them, the tour program is part of the either a preservation organization or history museum, something like that. Um, so as far as a standalone uh, tour focused organization, there's only a handful uh, in the entire country. So that really is a testament one to the um, really incredible architecture and neighborhoods of Buffalo that are there that, you know, people want to take a tour of, as well as the the volunteer spirit here in Buffalo um, with so many people who want to tell Buffalo stories and are willing to give their time to do that. Well, between, uh, uh, and Anne, do, do we have any questions that have come in? Yes, we do. Uh, sure. Of the tours of the buildings that are occurring on September 30th, are any of the tours guided? Most of them are self-guided, so um, the details of each building are on the website. I know, for example, the Nash House Museum, that will be a guided tour uh, through that building, but most of the buildings will be a self-guided tour. So there'll be docents inside of the building, um, and you're welcome to ask them questions as you go through. They may have a few things to share um, as you go through the buildings, uh, but it's not going to be a guided tour through most of the buildings. But again, a couple of them uh, will have a guided tour. I will say that the at the downtown library, we are doing guided tours here on the hour for about 30 minutes. Um, and so people that come in who would like to see more of our downtown library, will they'll be able to do so, you know, come at one o'clock or two o'clock or three o'clock whenever you're here. And we'd be happy to show you around at that time. And elaborate just a little bit, because uh, uh, sometimes you've taken people really behind the scenes. Is that part of the tour you're doing? Yes, it will be. You'll get to see a little bit of the high and low of this building, I would say. <laughs> well, the stacks area is an interesting uh, exploration in its own right, and uh, and and a rarity to see the rare book, book rooms. I, I don't know if that's included, but yes, uh, good. That, that's very good. Yes, right. we'd be delighted to have people come and take a closer look at the downtown library. Any other any other uh, questions from the audience? Mm. And in addition to the library, so we're so appreciative, um, Anne, of the library being part of this since year mm -hmm. one. Um, and there's also the Buffalo Presidential Center um, that is uh, still a lot of people aren't familiar with it or haven't been to visit it yet. So this is a great opportunity uh, to check that out. And that is also inside the library. So I encourage people uh, on September 30th to visit uh, the library. And while they're there, check out the Presidential Center inside. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. That, that presidential center, by the way, is open just on weekends, just Saturdays. Uh, give them a little uh, uh, announcement, if you would. Yes, they are open on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. throughout the year. Good. And we're seeing, folks, uh, we've got quite a history with presidents, which, Brad, really get, it gets me, uh, give, given the opening of the new Buffalo AKG Art Museum, uh, uh, literally the, the attraction that brings people. Then we suddenly had uh, a, a major announcement with the Penn Dixie uh, Fossil uh, Nature Center that we've got. Uh, and you realize that the dream of many people, and I think of Stan Lipsy in particular, uh, uh, among other community leaders uh, that envisioned uh, us to be a leader in art, architecture, history, nature, uh, uh, the, the Olmstead Conservancy is, is like the, the leader of, the, of that whole national network in many ways, uh, given the fact that the first uh, Olmstead Park system was here in Buffalo. Uh, uh, it started in 1868. So, so you just say, wow, all these pieces that very few really put together uh, through an organization like yours, Brad, has has helped not just educate tourists, but more importantly, educated ourselves, uh, our, our, our million or so that live in the neighborhood, if you will, of Western New York, uh, Erie County, Chautauqua County, Niagara County. Um, uh, and, and you just say, wow, that that is a major service uh, for place-based lifelong learning, the, the term I like to use. Uh, any thoughts, any comments? 
Yeah, the majority of people who take Explore Buffalo's tours still are local residents. So um, that's most days, you know, you take a tour with Explore Buffalo, it's going to be mostly people from Western New York. We do get visitors from all around the country. Um, as of last week, we were at 38 out of 50 states. Uh, people had taken a tour with us, um, but that's 10% or less um, of the people who take our tours are from outside of the Western New York area. Hmm. Interesting. I like that. Well, uh, Buffalo's uh, uh, decline, if you will, that most of us had, uh, many of us, certainly folks of my age, have lived through. Uh, we didn't live through the glory days, but we're doing a decent job. Luckily, we didn't tear down a lot of, uh, of this. There was no need to. The growth wasn't there. And now we've got it to share uh, with ourselves and others. So it's it. it Really, uh, uh, it's it's an exciting moment, and uh, Explore Buffalo has been at the vanguard of uh, of creating that excitement. That that's uh, uh, the best way I can put it, Brad. And uh, uh, expressing my pride of your organization and and certainly your leadership. Um, uh, any closing thoughts that you want to give? Just uh, again, the importance of taking advantage of this one day especially to see spots that you normally don't easily, uh, you know, have information about and are with fellow travelers, if you will, on the journey through doors open. Do you want to yeah, just so we, emphasize that? Just want to encourage everyone who's listening to attend doors open on September 30th, but also it's a great opportunity. Um, the real reason we do this is to try and get people who are new to explore Buffalo and to really um, haven't taken a tour or haven't really um, discovered Buffalo's architecture and history yet. So it's a great opportunity to invite that friend, neighbor, or family member, somebody you know who you know may have an interest in this but just hasn't um, really dove into uh, this sort of uh, part of our city's culture yet. So um, bring a friend and really enjoy what will surely be a beautiful day in downtown Buffalo on Saturday, September 30th. I will ask one more question about the education, school education. You do have a specific program for that, don't you? Yep. So we have, uh, we run field trips for schools, uh, K through 12 students, and um, we do a lot of those May and June. We're going to have um, a good number of them in the next month or so while the weather's still good. So most of these walking tours uh, for field trips are Canal Side, downtown Buffalo, uh, some over at Silo City, the ground level tour there. And so it's a pretty weather dependent uh, field trip. So we encourage schools to contact us if they're interested in arranging a tour uh, for their students. And we're happy to set that up. Brad, thank you very much. Uh, Great presentation, great organization, folks. Uh, do your part to support it uh, and enjoy it and enjoy it. Uh, so next week, uh, join us. John Spears, the executive director of the library, will be speaking. And we were talking about a title. Uh, do you have a title for that program yet or not? No, I have not heard that yet. All right. Well, we'll come up with a good one. I'm sure <laughs> uh, uh, John will uh, will teases with some uh, uh, clever title, uh, if, I, if I know John Spears at all. So uh, we'll look forward to that. Libraries are uh, are in the news uh, in many ways. Uh, and Buffalo's uh, got, again, one of the finest libraries in the country when you realize its research capabilities as well as its public uh, number of branches and, and uh, public exposure, let alone the downtown library. Uh, it's center point. So join us next week, Tuesdays, uh, get back in the routine of uh, 1230 to roughly one o'clock to go ahead and um, uh, make your Tuesdays uh, imagining greater Buffalo. Thanks, folks. I'm Dennis Galucky. Good day and be well. Thanks, Brad.